Welcome back to Morning Express. And in case you're joining us now with me in studio, I have Dr. X N Iraqi, who is a lecturer at University of Nairobi, and Michael Aguanda, Mr. Michael Aguanda, who's a governance policy expert. And today we are looking and projecting on what should be expected on the State of the Nation address to be given by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, today, uh, later on. And your comments are still coming through on what you're expecting uh, from the President. And let me just read a few. Uh, we have um, Joseph who says corruption uh, so that many can resolve to all people, not only those around him. Titus Mutai says the high cost of living and rampant corruption. So corruption keeps coming again and again. Uh, Swabera, uh, the president must explain, among other cr crimes, why some stole five billion from the Ministry of Health and got away with it. Again, corruption coming. So this ugly head of corruption as we have called it. And sometimes some people say when we baptize it and call it an ugly head, it's stealing, basically. Uh, Dr. Iraqi, before we look at the state of the economy and where we are and where we should be, is it a moral question? Is it a, uh, where did we lose it? Because as Africans, as culturally, even in Kenya, any community you come from, stealing was a crime that was almost punishable by death. So at what point did stealing become acceptable? I, I see it in two perspectives. To some extent, corruption ties with <coughs> our cultural bringing. That if you are corrupt, you are not really corrupt. You are just helping others. If I went to my village today and got 40 guys and came and fixed them in Kenyan parastatos, whether they are qualified or not. Even if they are ghost workers. Yes, I'm sure I'll be a hero. Mm -hmm. So we don't see corruption the way people see it as black and white. It's part of helping people. And that's why people who are corrupt are celebrated. And until we change that set, mind to set up and we see corruption for what it is, then we are going to keep on talking about corruption. And it has a lot to do with our values. Take a very good example. If you look at our constitution, it is very American. <coughs> the governors, the senators, and all, all those other positions. <coughs> but did we import the American values? Because everybody in America talks about protestant work ethics which I was surprised is not even in our CRI syllabus in high school, that work is honorable. Mm. Work is to be, to be celebrated. Mm. So we are not going to kick, up, to kick corruption in this country until we start seeing work as godly, as honorable, as something to be proud of. That apart, I think one of the best ways to deal with corruption in this country is to use ICT, so that we know exactly what people are doing. So if I've bought a pen for a school, it should be available somewhere. Anybody, any public, any member of public want to see it, should be able to see it. Mm. And that's why people are resisting ICT, because corruption derives when people don't have information. That's why you found some people fighting IF, IFMIS. That's why people are going to start fighting something like blockchains, because people don't want information. But one way to deal with, inform with corruption is to make sure that information is available. OK. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, carry on. And the moment we accept that, that if I want to go to a pub para start and say, can I find out the number of cups that have been bought here? Mm. If I want to a certain organization and say, I want to find out how much money was used to buy toilet paper, and it should be available, then there's no reason why people are going to be corrupt. But as long as we do things in a very opaque way, mm. people are going to thrive then, in corruption. Um, that co continues. I want us to look at the state of the economy. Uh, Mr. Gwanda, on where we are today as a country, one of the things that many, I'm sure, would be happy to hear from the president is uh, a plan a clear plan on how we can improve our economy. We do know that there is the four-pillar uh, agenda for Jubilee in their manifesto uh, for this, uh, for this uh, term that they have. But are we clear on how that is going to affect us and improve our lives, basically? Michael, if you ask me today, I may be able to afford a house. I may be able to afford to drive. I may be able to afford to drive but the majority of Kenyans are not able to afford those basic commodities. Uh, yesterday, I think there was a clip on TV where a coffin maker was saying that he has raised <coughs> his cost because the timber has become expensive. Mm. That is production of end products that is sold to the poor person out there that needs a coffin every single day. When you look at issues that have been bedeviling um, Kenya power recently with inflated cost of bail. That cost of bail in, of electricity is felt to the last person 
the person manufacturing the goods, manufacturing, uh, for example, uh, or making bread, is going to pass that cost to the person in the village that do not earn a salary to buy that, that bread at an exorbitant price. Why? Because Kenya Power is charging people what they are not supposed to charge them, and they cannot defend it either. And, and, and they cannot even say, we, were, we are ready to return the money that perhaps have been charged to consumers erroneously. And when you see this kind of things happening, and the government has not spoken about it very strongly, other than the fact that the Kenya Power uh, CEO was invited to, to meet uh, uh, a committee in parliament, which he said, no, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still doing my other things. I will come and meet you at a date, later date. While Kenyans are suffering, when you <coughs> want to increase among the big four that the president is talking about, and one is manufacturing. Mm -hmm. When you want to increase manufacturing and attract investors in your country, the cost of production must be low. But as long as the cost of production, that is power, <coughs> generating power in this country and using power becoming so expensive to a common person, how is it going to be possible to somebody who wants to invest billions? That's why we are having people going to the neighboring countries to set up factories and industries there. And you know, when we talk about uh, manufacturing as well, we are also talking about indirectly creating jobs for people in this country. You can't create more opportunities for jobs if you don't have money to pay them because you have to pay Kenya Power. I believe that the monopoly that perhaps Kenya Power has uh, you know, enjoyed over the years must be broken down today so that the competition is brought down into telecommunication like what we've seen in telecommunication, where basically everybody now still have their, now have their the, the mobile phones they can call, they don't have to depend on postal and corporations as it used to be, this must be done to save Kenyans from the skyrocketing cost of living in this country. And if it's not done, then this manufacturing idea is just a fallacy because you must bring it down by involving yourself into the nitty gritty, the power, the cost of, of implements and equipments, the transportation of the same. I was talking to a gentleman more recently who does a lot of transportation and he's telling me what SGR has done from Mombasa to Nairobi. It's becoming very affordable to transport goods. That's what we need to think about when we're talking about the big four, what are the needy greedies that are blocking the access of the growth of the economy of this country? Okay. It's not about the big four, but mm. let's break it down to what, if we are talking about universal health care, are we doing exactly, <coughs> I mean, the president visited Kenyatta National Hospital the other day. I'm yet to hear exactly what transformation he needs to do in that place. More recently, I saw a video of a minister of health in Uganda uh, you know, going to a hospital and, and like a patient and being charged a lot of money uh, by cartels <laughs> at that hospital. And at the end of the day, radical changes needed to, to take place. If it is universal health care, I know the high schools have got it. What about the poor people in the community? Mm -hmm. What about the Kenyatta National Hospital that have billions and billions of Kenyan shillings and, and these are people's money? What is it doing to benefit the people instead of On getting to people's pockets? All right, Dr. Iraqi, I know one of the backbones of the economy, according to the Big Four agenda, is uh, manufacturing. But that looks very good on paper unless it is uh, literally shown and worked down and brought down to the bottom. What are some of those things that the president possibly should address today in regards to manufacturing to ensure it doesn't just become a piped dream? It's not just a nice piece of paper, which Kenyans are very good at doing excellent <laughs> pieces of paper, but actualizing becomes a problem. I'm an academic, so we write a lot of papers, yes. but we like to make them as realistic <laughs> as they can. Maybe to address your question, let's start from the beginning. You mentioned a few minutes ago that the minimum wage has gone up. Right. Based on what? Because one of the most expensive inputs into manufacturing or any type of labor. industrialization labor. Mm -hmm. And on labor day, somebody says minimum wage is going up by 5%. Mm -hmm. The first thing to do to get industrialized is to make sure that wages are always linked to productivity. People should be paid more because they are more productive, not because they are everybody. Mm. But that apart, I looked at some data from 1955 coronial reports, and I was very surprised that the percentage contribution of manufacturing to GDP has almost remained the same up to now. 
Wow, despite our growth in the country. Yes. In numbers. So, so when the president says is one of the big four, I think he has a point. Because whether we want or not, manufacturing is a very big employer mm. for a simple reason. If you set up a factory somewhere, <coughs> let's say in Shamahoho, or in Karachunyo, or in Machakos, there are so many other industries that come because of that. We shall need accountants, we shall need people to, be, to give those people housing, to give those people schools and so on. But if you have to start manufacturing, you have to make sure that the, 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 the right things are right. One, the cost of power. He talked about it a few minutes ago. The reason why people are moving to Egypt, for example, instead of Kenya is because of the cost of power. So the cost of power must be right, and two, <coughs> the labor cost <coughs> must be wrong. So if we are going to keep on going on strike, demanding higher wages, manufacturers are not going to come here. So two or three very important is we must move to higher levels. We cannot keep on talking about the smokestacks, mm. the steel mills and so on. If you look at China and Korea, they started by, doing, by being labor intensive. Maybe we can start with that, but it only they moved up. So if you look at China today, we are importing smartphones from them and very high other valued items. Mm. So let's start from the basics, like textiles and so on, then we upgrade as fast as possible. But if you not do that, if the labor relations are not okay, we don't have power. And three, very important, we are corrupt. Because industrialization is something real. You cannot cheat that you have produced a car. It must be a real car. And it has to be there. It has to be there and tangible. Yes, but very important, mm -hmm. we must see industrialization or manufacturing mm -hmm. in connection with the other big four. Mm -hmm. And I see it in two perspectives. One, I believe that, man, that the big four should, link, should be linked to Vision 2030. Because Vision 2030 was very well written. Mm -hmm. God bless Wahomega Kurusol. Because if you link Big Four to Vision 2030, we are going to have a clearer vision. But more important to me is if we can get the Big Four right, if you notice they are very basic, addressing the health, very basic to everybody. Housing is very basic to everybody. Food security is very basic to everybody. And jobs from manufacturing are very basic. If we can address that, you know what is going to happen? Kenyans will now have time to think of bigger things, become innovative. Think of what is going to replace Facebook, what is going to replace uh, blockchains, what is going to replace M-Pesa. So if we can get these things right, then the country is poised to become, to, to grow faster. We have people who have more jobs, people who are happier, and a growing nation. But very important, we cannot talk about manufacturing and so on without thinking about the market. Because the Kenyan market is only f about 45 million. Mm. Chinese have realized that, Koreans realize that, that we need to think about the global market. Mm. And how do we get the global market? We must make sure that the products we manufacture are very high quality. Are very high quality. So they can be bought anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can export them anywhere in the world. And, and of course, that would change us from just being consumers to being exporters. Because we it. seem to consume a lot, that is uh, it. but uh, send nothing out. Um, Mr. Gwanda, one of, uh, I attended a session somewhere not too long ago, and one of the things that was coming out is that we have a lot of Chinese investors coming into Kenya in the industry of manufacturing. What is it that they might be seeing that we're not seeing and we're not utilizing? Because here they are coming into Kenya to manufacture and finding us here, yet uh, we seem not to be able to get that sector going as uh, vibrant as it should be. Good question. But remember that we are talking about corruption, we are talking about capital, we are also talking about issues of land that is becoming really, really expansive to a small investor. Mm. Land in this country, must, land issues must be addressed. If you want investors to come into this country, or if you want small manufacturers to sprout up and become big manufacturers, and to start small, we must address the issue of land so people are able to acquire land. I think previously what was happening, if you are an investor and you went to a city, the government will be able to offer you land on lease period so that you can do business. But remember, this is now running out because uh, the government is no longer buying land for future expansion from the surrounding cities, you know? Um, and, and they are not offering these incentives for the investors. If you want manufacturing to continue in this country and also to benefit the, the people, the citizens of this country, we must be able to start giving incentive to these investors. How do we give them incentives? Say, this 
uh, for example, in Kisumu, a Kenya Broadways was given a huge chunk of land that was on lease for them so that they could put industry there. We had Kikomi that was given a huge chunk of land to put industry there. And I believe their counties must also think in that line. They must be able to secure land that they can ask investors to come into their country and say, counties and say, <coughs> put up an industry here just pay us a lease, but the land is for the government. And so if you don't do anything with it, we'll look for somebody else. So land one. Number two is the cost of this equipment. The Chinese are coming into this country because they're coming with money given to them by their government. And one thing that you don't know about the Chinese is the Chinese is overpopulated in their country. Right. And so they're also looking for opportunities for their citizens to go out there and make meaningful income to their citizens. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? They give you the money to invest somewhere else and they export their people to work in that country. The profit goes back into their country. Kenyans can do that. But you've realized that actually in Kenya, today for you to get a loan is not an easy thing if you're just a small person. And that limits you from buying equipment, from buying machineries to get into investment. We have well-trained people in this country that can operate big, big uh, industries and, 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 and manufacturing companies, but they wouldn't do that because first, they can't get the money. Secondly, the bureaucracy in registration in some of these countries, um, in, in our country. And, and thirdly, is the cost of wage that has been talked about here. When you're thinking of employing people and you can't give them money because, you know, enough money because the government stipulates that the minimum wage balance must be this, mm -hmm. and you've not even started making money in this business, you're wondering, <laughs> and before long, now the government is saying, oh, we are even going to increase the number of uh, labor officers so that they can check on everybody. You're creating conflict between employers and the government. Right. The, the employers, the biggest employer in this country are private uh, employers, uh, you know, the, the businessmen, the, 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 the biggest okay. employer. All right, uh, we'll need to wind up now because of time. So, Dr. Iraqi, in a nutshell, very briefly, what is it that would be music to your ears in regards to the State of the Nation address if uh, something that would be refreshing for you and you'd say this at least is a step in the right direction? Very simple. Focus on the basics. I on think the business? Yeah, on the basics. On the basics. Because in this country, we tend to think at very high level. Right. But the person on the streets, the farmer, the cobbler, the shoe shiner, doesn't understand those big things we talk about. They want something that is very tangible. Shall I have my health okay if I go to the hospital? Shall my kids go to school? Shall can I, I eat? Have, shall I eat? Shall I have a housing over my roof? If we can focus on those very basic, basic things, mm. then we shall be able to move this country forward. All right. The, other, the big things are okay, but mm. we must disaggregate them to the basics. All right. But uh, I, 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 I think I would be unfair if I don't mention about China. Okay. Because I yeah, think that was, that was yes. a very good yes, observation. Yes, very briefly. Go on. And I was in China last month, and I can tell you those guys are far, going far. And China are doing well for very simple reasons. One, they believe in themselves. In Kenya, we don't like believing in ourselves. If you came up with a new product, <coughs> a water pump, oh, this guy came up with a pump, a Gwanda can come up with a water pump. But if China come up with anything, no matter how, how bad it is, they believe it is theirs. So we must believe in ourselves. Two, we must have skills that can help us in manufacturing. For example, how many people are graduating in STEM, science, technology, and mathematics? And very important, I agree with him, land. If I'm going to start an industry and the first one billion will be buying land, when am I going to make money? Mm. So we must think a bit like Chinese. We learn from them. And this country will get industrialized. All right, your closing comments, sir. Very briefly. I want the president not to give us a very big speech <laughs> for unifying the country, but I want him to give, break it down. When we talk about in, uh, uh, inclusivity, I want the president to say, this has been made wrong. This is how we're going to make it. Mm. When we're talking about corruption, we know that EACC is doing very little to get guys out of corruption. <coughs> I think he needs to bring drastic changes. When we're talking about issues of electoral mal malpractices in this country, in IBC, we need to be very clear what we want to do with the IBC. We cannot be con changing IBC officials after every election, <laughs> but how can we have a system where it is not the person there 
but it is the services that it's are rendered office. to the people. Absolutely. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Dr. Exen Iraqi, lecturer at the University of Nairobi, and Mr. Michael Aguanda, who's a governance and policy expert this morning on, uh, well, looking at what we should project and expect from the State of the Nation address uh, this, morning, uh, this afternoon from the President as we continue with that. For now, we're going to take a short break. We'll be looking at universal health care in the next segment, but as we do that, Let's take a look at the traffic update from uh, Kenyatta Avenue roundabout. And it looks like it's pretty heavy inbound getting into the city center, but it is flowing and it is moving. In case you see any hiccups, once you leave wherever you are, do uh, feel free to let us know so that we can keep, keep everybody informed. We'll also take a look at the weather as we take a break. This is KTN News.